Dragon X, who the favorites were. KD Wolster. Spontaneous for what's in our lives. Act a little bit stupid, a little bit dumb. Let's not look back when we're older and regret it. Let's get a little bit crazy. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Spring 2019. It is the final day of week nine, only one week to go of the regular season after this. It is the last chance saloon for a lot of our teams. Humble Life, only one more opportunity, and to be perfectly honest, their fate ain't in their hands anymore. Things are gonna have to go downhill for Darm One Gaming, like it already seems to have started to yeah. in the games last night. And I mean, coming in here as well, I mean, Sandbox, they're wanting to really show that they are one of the true contenders yeah. this split to really show that they can end up at the, the top of the standings well, they need and, to prove and show that they're, that, they're actually, that good. Yeah, yeah. They, they need to show that they deserve second position right. as well. I mean, right now they're in fourth place because after that matchup against SKT, that was really a title match uh, during this week, this week of week nine, that was honestly decimation. SKT yeah. tore them apart, and now, now that they're reeling, it could be an opportunity for Hanwha to sort of pounce and get themselves on track, because Hanwha only have two more matches to go. This one, and one match next week against KT Rolster, right. definitely a game that Hanwha can win. So, they're not out of the running against Dumb One Gaming just yet. As you can see on the standings in your screen right now, the purple means that you are locked into playoffs. Sandbox, Kingzone, SKT, and Griffin, not necessarily in that order, are already confirmed. Jinek confirmed to go down to relegation. Thumb One Gaming and Humble Life still battling for that final playoff spot. Hanwha so incredibly close to being confirmed number six yet again. It is just a story that we've seen oh so, so many times. Probably too many times. Since they were the Rocks Tigers, it was sixth place. Then they were Hama Life Esports. They couldn't get the monkey off their back, and they have remained in sixth place almost every single season. Can they now turn their fate around against Sandbox Gaming, a team that has yeah. been formidable in so many different ways? They've held on to highest damage per minute as a team for the entire season. Feels like ever since week one or week two, they have not dropped. Out of first place in that regard, and I mean, you take a look at Hanwha Life's last matches. They had a 1-2 loss to SK Telecom, 1-2 to Dom Juan, 0-2 to Griffin. Those teams aren't necessarily any slouches. They did have wins against Gen G and Jin Air, but it definitely has been a little bit of a downward spiral for them. Yep, and you can see it's only losses to the top five. They yep. have been the gatekeepers of the bottom side of the LTK table, as per usual. 
KT is going to be the matchup, like I mentioned before, for Harmful Life, but Genji for Sandbox Gaming, who do have what should be a pretty simple victory for yep. this squad. Last time, it was not close between Genji and Sandbox, so they might be out of challenge for that second place, but they're going to have to get a victory here, and all of the points matter as well. Checking out the points of the match, speaking of which, Fierce second, third, fourth place competition with two matches remaining for each team and Sandbox is the start of everything. And then immediately afterwards, we do have a Freaker taking on Kingzone Dragon X, who are also in that race, so definitely is going to be exciting. Tell me PO potential is with me. Hanwha, life's rock climbing continues. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And well, bottom lane significance. Can Hanwha Life read the Joker card with the master key? That is, uh, that's, that's too many puns. That's, that's I just think Freak too much. did this. Yeah, there's too much going I think, on. Uh, I think they hired Freak temporarily for the match points. Well, Joker actually has some really interesting stats, to be perfectly honest. Yep. This guy is, uh, he's the guy that misses a lot of hooks. He was missing a hell of a lot of Glacial Fissures in their series against SKT, which was a bit of a problem. But uh, his vision score is absolutely out of control. He buys the most control wards and places the most wards in the LCK. We have players like Mata who are known for just throwing vision absolutely everywhere. These are the stats between the two teams. KDA's not exactly anything you want to write home about, but like I say, that DPM still right up there for Sandbox. Yep. DPM is the point you were talking about earlier on. Sandbox, they like to fight. They like to get down in very early. A lot of that is because of Summit and on Fleek. Yeah. As well as Ghost down there in the bottom lane. We'll take a quick look at some of the highlights here. This is Hanwha Life. Yeah. Having a little bit of a 2v2. Yeah, they do manage to turn this one around relatively well. It was a good flash there from Tal to get him out of the way. And in fact, the top lane matchup is going to be very exciting between Sandbox and Hanwha because Summit is definitely an up-and-comer here in the LCK. And Tal has found himself in 2019. One of the reasons why this team has looked better and better. And there's Bono coming in and ruining the Nico. Yeah, and uh, Bono is the question for me on the side of Hanwha Life because he did have a pretty decent start to the season. Hanwha looked yeah. like one of our uh, top contenders at the beginning. However, it has been largely on the man in the jungle that's been messing things up here for Hanwha in the past games. We have Ghost and Joker just doing some things. And uh, Joker's Thresh has always been very good, but uh, sometimes the hooks don't necessarily oh. land, as this was, uh, that was a whoopsie at the end of yeah. that one. Cut the video, cut the video. <laughs> cut it, a little bit of an error there from Onfleet. Yeah, but uh, this wasn't an error, that was a fantastic three man ult come out of Joker. On the Braum, we'll ignore the rest of this game when it comes to the Braum play. Is, uh, it wasn't. You go back and watch <laughs> it if you want to find out. That's not something that I would personally recommend. Uh, SKT did manage to get a 2-0 in that series, and now Damn. Sandbox looking to turn this one around as Joker versus Key is going to be that uh, key matchup, no pun intended. Both of them, absolutely terrible KDAs, but the vision score is what we need to look at for Joker. Yep. We, talk, we talk about him as sort of another old man uh, player here in the LCK, much like uh, we talk about score, but you can see Joker does so much more behind the scenes with the amount of wards that he puts down and the, the amount of control that comes out of Joker yeah. when it comes to these mid-games that, honestly, Sandbox has been very good at navigating. Yeah. Definitely has some very good vision score. KDA, not the best, yeah, but, it's a, you know. That's definitely at the bottom, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah just, just don't look at that one. Look at the... Per yeah, we've highlighted, the, other we've highlighted yeah. the stats you're supposed to look at. Come on, guys. I mean, one of the things that's most exciting for me here is that we're not quite on the 9.6 patch yet. So nope. being on 9.5, this is a top lane meta. Yep. Where counter pick on red side is so powerful. And there's very few top laners in the league right, so right now outside of maybe Keenan Khan that could be better to have on your side than Summit. I think so too. I think Summit has been absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I think Tal is another player that's been very, very impressive so far this season. He's had his ups and downs, and some of his uh, Yorick picks were in uninspired situations, but uh, otherwise, definitely has been good. I've liked how Hanwha has been drafting as well as they take a bow, entering Lowell Park here for our first match. They uh, they drafted very aggressively against 
Griffin, but Griffin was coming off two losses, and you could imagine you want to go into that one and try and capitalize on the weaknesses that were capitalized earlier. They tried to do that, but Griffin had made the right adjustments to turn it around. Tarzan was way too aggressive in the early game for their strategy to work out, but I liked where their heads were at. And a lot of our biggest criticisms for a lot of our teams has been in the draft phase. Yes. And we'll see what team ends up getting the edge here in game number one. It's hard for me to imagine that Sandbox would fumble a draft on red side. I think so too. In game being one so this, strong. Yeah. In this current meta. And Hanwha Life, I mean, they have good players, but none that really stand out for any of the massive power picks that do exist on this current patch. So we'll have to see what kind of, de of a device they're going to try to attack the pick ban with. Well, these are going to be your rosters. No surprises here, guys. No so on towards the top side of the map. Tal has regained his position, and Lava has been very stable in the mid lane at the moment. Haven't seen Temp for quite a few weeks, as uh, Sung and Key will, of course, be on the bottom side of the map. Amwa um, needs to turn things around. They need to do it now. This is a must win for this team unless they want to once again face the reality that they are sixth place. This is really do or die for them. And I mean, the other awful feeling about this is that, as you mentioned earlier, it's not even totally in their hands. Nope. Other things have to go their way. And when you look at it for Dom Juan, it's, uh, it, it, it's hard to make Hanwha feel optimistic. Dom Juan, they go up against Gen G, and then they go up against KT. Yep. So uh, KT is going to be uh, our final match it's yeah. going to be you and I uh, closing out the regular season after Jinnah mm. versus Griffin. What a banger of a day. We also have, yeah, I mean, the, the most iconic match <laughs> of the split. We get to witness balance we get being recreated. We to go beyond the event horizon of a black hole. <laughs> 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 right. Oh, my God. You know, you know in, Interstellar? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, is it's Interstellar, actually, like, in that room, there's, like, all of these <laughs> books around and things like that. It's Griffin versus Jinnah. <laughs> That's what it actually spelled out. That's what it spelled out in that movie. The, the movie didn't make sense to me until this moment. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. You guys at home, I hope that wasn't a spoiler for you. But now, if you haven't seen Interstellar, go and watch it. It'll make way more sense yeah. understanding the context. And speaking of which, let's understand this draft. As we get into it, I'm on our blue side, Sandbox on the red. Thresh going to be the first fan sort of serves double duty against both Key and Joker, who have been jumping towards this pick a lot. Ten picks so far in the LCK for Joker on the Thresh. Followed by the Olaf ban here against Bono. And if they ban the Lee Sin, does Bono have any champions that he can actually perform on? Well, it's actually, it's, it's, uh, it sounds really mean, but it is a question that we've been posing to Bono, and his answer has been, honestly, no. He did get an MVP award once on Zach. That's true. The that Zach, is, yep. the Zach has worked. However, he's now picking it in situations where it just straight up doesn't work because it doesn't have enough priority in the early game. And uh, Hanwha just, they got crushed. Yeah. Lissandra being banned away by Sandbox as they are on the red side. Don't want to give that away as a first pick for Hanwha Life. And giving it away to Lava would definitely be a mistake. Irelia now banned away by so, Hanwha Life. Yeah, so Olaf and Lissandra banned on the side of Sandbox. What are they going to finish this one off with? The Jace is standing out in my mind as being a definite power pick here, but Rise is also available, often a blocker pick to that Vladimir that we've seen Tal be very successful on, and Callista is going to be the ban. So a lot of these flexible solo lanes are untouched. And if Hanwha don't pick Jace here, there has to be something going wrong, right? Like. Yeah, I would, I would imagine that they would snipe Jace here. It's not patch 9.6 yet. It is now locked in. So we'll have to see how Summit wants to respond to that. Could be an Aftershock Rise, although Rise is able to be flexed mid and top. Yeah. The Rise does make a lot of sense here to me. Could be picking up something like a Vladimir as well, but just because, you know, the Rise does block uh, the Vladimir on the other side. I think that Rise Lee Sin is probably what they should be going with here. On Fleek has definitely been prioritizing the Lee Sin and you deny it from Bono as well. Looks like AD carries where their minds are and the Lucian is going to be locked in. And Braum is now still up on the table, so maybe trying to tell Hanwha that, hey, you have Lee to Sin take Braum. it. You take Lee Sin Braum right now and it's actually put a lot of spanners into the works here of Sandbox. Let's see what ends up being selected. 
on one life. They only have seven seconds left. They're not even hovering anything yet. Yeah, they've been waiting a long time. Trying to find uh, the Tom Kench Thomas, button. maybe Ash Tom, and they're just going to say, hey, Ghost and Joker, you guys are negated. Yeah, I actually really like the Ash pickup if they do decide to go with it. Sungin has been defaulting yeah. to this pick, and he's so good with his Hawk Shots LS. He's so good at it. Means that Bono will have so much more yeah. utility I, in the early game. I think game. it has to be Ash. The other alternative is Ezreal, but Ash Tom Kench is probably the biggest no that just exists inside of the game right now. Very interesting. They're picking LeBlanc even though Rai is, is already locked in. Okay. Maybe assuming that Rise will be heading towards the top side of the map. This is definitely very strong solo lanes here for Hanwar, and we can't forget Lava's performance on the LeBlanc. He is a fantastic Yorick. LeBlanc player. And Yorick is considered the counter to Jace. And so it is going to be locked in. That will be a mid-rise and a top Yorick. Now, I'm wondering, because Ezreal and Ash are something, they seem so simple to have picked up. I'm very doubtful that a LeBlanc would have been banned away. Oh, I don't know about that. Sandbox. Just because Lava is so good at the champion, often you see it first round ban. I think they needed to snap it up if they wanted to get it. I just don't know whether the priority was all that necessary because the Ash pick just suits Hanwha's style yeah. so well, and enabling Bono is so important. They ban Ashley Sin now, and what does Hanwha do? They go to an Ezreal Tom Kench lane that doesn't have the same utility yeah. unless you use two shot barrage on cooldown to try and snipe the jungle. Definitely a different story. The Braum, though, is going to be banned here on the side of Humble Life, so we're not going to get that out of the bottom lane of Sandbox. With Galio and Thresh having been banned off the table, we'll, we'll see what kind of a support will end up making its way through. If we go down the list, the uh, Thresh is banned, the Galio is banned, the Shen is still available for Sandbox if our Joker wants to go towards it, and that has been uh, the third one in his trinity of preferred support champions before the Braum really sort of came in, but everyone plays the Braum. It's a different story. Let's see if maybe it's just an Alistar that could be picked up. All right, so the Rek'Sai is banned here. I think that means that uh, Ghost is going to be locking in on Fleek's Lee Sin. Nice. After this one, unless Humwa Life are going to read that and ban it away. But I trust on Fleek's champion pool much more than I do Bono's. There are still so many different choices. The J4 is going to be there. The Morgana yep. is going to be banned here against Joker. And I mean, you couldn't, there's other picks that perhaps these teams haven't practiced that are actually okay in this spot, such as a Zyra. There's would be no completely way they fine. weren't locking in that Lee Sin. And then obviously, Soraka would probably be completely fine as well. But I'm very doubtful that we'll see those two champions appear here in LCK. Yeah, no one's actually listened to you when you talk about the, the Soraka Tom Kench uh, counter pick. Used to happen, happened in 2018. Yep. Ezreal there, locked in. Not that we weren't pick. expecting that. All right, Bono now on Elise. So they're drafting for a lot of power. And when I think about Hanwha Live trying to take this to Sandbox, not sure if you want to try to fight fire with fire. But Sandbox now, they have option to respond. They're hovering over Khan. Would be uh, definitely a lot of engage potential out of the bottom side of the map. And honestly, if Onfleek wants to play around this Rakan Lucian, there is explosive early damage. If they can jump onto the Tom Kench and punish him over and over again, this could be the avenue that Sandbox take to victory and the Rakan will be locked in here alongside the Lucian. So these are gonna be the team compositions and Hanwha Life, they're coming out the gate with a very, very aggressive approach to this game number one and honestly if their top half of the map falls behind in the early stages it's gonna be almost near impossible for them to recover as York and Rise that? will start hard winning everything from about one and a half items forward and yes you have the Ezreal scaling component inside of your team composition it's gonna be a very slippery slope so all that Sandbox has to do is weather the storm and it's on Hanwha Life to find a way through it. Yeah, and we'll see whether Hanwha Life can actually get their priority in the right positions as well, because I have a feeling if Shelly goes down early, crashes through the top lane, Jace gets out of control, what does the Yorick then do to try and salvage the situation? And I think that even when you talk about the scaling options, I don't think if you pilot this composition correctly, I just don't think scaling actually comes into the equation at all, because Bono is on 
such an early pressure jungler that can gank so extremely well and, and counter gank very well as well against the Lee Sin. We'll see whether Bono is going to be able to have his eye in because he didn't get either of his two successful champions and this is going to have to be him proving to us that he can also pilot the Elise that Clid and Tarzan both proved can be devastating in the early game. Well, let's see what ends up happening. It's all the main focus on the top half of the map. Yes. Unless Sandbox can bring it down towards the bottom side just because the ganking duo of the Rakan Lee Sin will be formidable. Certainly do like what Hama Life have put together as far as early pressure, but can Sandbox get through it? Let's find out now in game one. All right, Thomas went and just uh, had a bit of a swim in the river. Couldn't actually see if he if he has the, the good skin, the earth skin. I think it was. Was it yeah. the Earth one? Yeah, I think it was the Earth one. All right, I, I didn't catch it right away. I was looking at the I, I really need to go into the practice cool tool and just, like, check out all of the, the, the skin. Tom Kench skins. Because yeah. I'm just not a Tom Kench player. As a play-by-play, -play, I just hate Tom Kench. He denies action. Denying action isn't fun. What? He does. He just gobbles up whoever they're jumping on, and, and then it just means nothing. That is fun. It's so sad. You get to watch the mental deterioration of your opponent. I, th I know that's that what That is you what like. I find exciting, yes. Mr. Carthus player. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm, uh, I play blue and magic. Oh, God. You might not get that, but... I don't. I only, you, you, only, well. you only taught me red. All right. Remember, that's, that's the go face. Why can't we just use Hearthstone references? I get that game. Okay. Um, be like uh, playing Freeze Mage. No one gets to play. Oh yeah, no you one know? has fun. Yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. that's, yeah. that's my idea of fun. Yeah, I like it. Okay, okay. <laughs> like OTK powers. Like <laughs> Go. Like, do I get through my deck? Yes, I do. Therefore, yes. I win. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Non-interactive. All right. Speaking of which, we are into the laning phase now, and Dove versus Lava in the mid lane is going to be one that Dove should be able to have a fair bit of control in now that Aftershock Rise is a thing. She distorts forward, he presses Rune Prison, and she does no damage. That's basically how the trades are going to go. One of the things I'm curious about here, and it could end up actually playing a part in this top lane dynamic, is yes, York is one of, or I mean, he is considered the biggest Jace counter that exists. Not too many champions counter Jace. However, because he hasn't been getting picked and utilized in recent times. He's also not being picked that much in solo queue anymore. No. How practiced is Summit coming into today's game on that York? Well, he's two and zero so far. I think that uh, the real Yorick aficionado is on the other side of the rift, though. Tal has certainly proven himself as the Yorick player in this Ooh. particular matchup. You got a really big wave. I love what Thal and Bono are doing right here. They're telling Summit. You gotta concede that, or this will be a really easy kill. I think we're yeah we're we're going back oh. to what you were talking about before when uh, you were considering non-interactive video game playing. And uh, Summit's enjoying that right now. Morning Mist does get himself the cannon minion. That's good news. He even gets the last right off to pick himself up uh, one of those others. And uh, Bono's not going for any aggressive dive as Onfleek has found his way up. Blue buff in hand, Volatile Spiderling does come out. Spiderling's blocked the cube, but Onfleek does make his way in. Good Cocoon is going to land onto the Yorick, but Summit doesn't take too much damage, and the Ghoulies are going to be there. Tal, aggressive engage onto Onfleek. Q does register, but the Lee Sin, only level three, not going to be able to do too much. Good That'll news, go. though, for Sa Sandbox topside, because the minion wave does go down to the Yorick. And so this actually ends up being beneficial for Sandbox, as you just mentioned. It it was very peculiar. They actually allowed the York to come back into the wave, get the XP on the cannon, and Siesta as well. Yeah. It was very peculiar, at least. Didn't just stand there to threaten Cocoon. So, a little bit of uh, misplay here by Hanwha Life with some decision making. Probably now, respecting uh, On Fleek's positioning a little bit yep. more. Definitely going to be an awkward spot here for the York, or for the Jace now up here in top lane. Gonna have to spend a little while in hammer form, trying to recover some of his mana. Yeah, he's uh, relatively low. Didn't go for any corrupting potion start or anything like that. Does have the Doran's Blade. Conqueror Jace has been picked up here from Tal as well. So going a lot more aggressively when it comes to these more skirmishy styles. 
Summon also gone for that one. We have seen a few more uh, different keystone choices for the Yorick. The Grasp of the Undying has come in for a little bit more wow. sustain and control as Bono. He uh, seems magnetized towards the top side of the map. He is. I, I think he's really into Yorick. I think, uh, I think Shelly's got some competition. Oh, man. All right, well, Bono's going to come in. He's going to beat the minion wave here, and the cocoon isn't going to land. Baby Cage comes out. That's an immediate flash there as Bono picks up turret aggro. Does use the repel to reset that one, but it's a disaster, really. Hanwha Life can't actually find any joy. They get themselves the, the flash out of Summit. He holds onto his life and his turret plate for the moment. You can see he really doesn't want to give down or give up that turret plate. So he stops his recall. He's trying to make sure that none of these minions hit that plate. You don't want to give the free 160 gold over to the Jace. Yep, just Jace. manages to keep it. Yeah, just goes back to base. Does Tal. He's 15 CS in the lead. The minion wave is going to go down, but Summit doesn't catch up very far. The pressure is working on the top side of the map, even if they didn't manage to lock down the kill. This feels like even if you derp around a little bit underneath yeah. that turret, you're still going to be successful on the side of uh, Bono and Tal. And well, bottom half of the map is definitely working out for Ghost and Joker. They have found themselves a little bit of a CS lead and in the mid lane. I mean, Rise is already up 10 farm. This is the real dangerous moment right now. Oh, Thal. Yeah, he does have his flash available. The Morning Mist is going to land there as Onfleet gets the Q. It is going to land, boops him back. Tal in a lot of trouble, but that's the flash down and barely any health bar remaining. And Julia doesn't go down either. She's dropped to 492 HP. She will end up being completely fine here. Paul doesn't have teleport and he's recalling. This is a complete nightmare situation because what it means is that everything that you just worked towards in top lane was just completely offset by that one gank. And now it's going to be hard for Thal to recover the pressure. We saw this happen actually in a game yesterday where a Kennen that was winning against an Atrox, all it took was one or two reliefs to completely just sway the matchup. Now, we have a blue invade going on over here. Don't think that Sandbox is going to try to actually contest it. Yeah, Ghost pokes his head in, but isn't actually able to deny it from Lava. He's going to be able to lock that one in himself. Nice bottom side control if a Hanwha Life Esports and the Elise. Where she goes needs to be respected from Sandbox, especially in this early game. Right now, the gold is incredibly even, though, and you have to look at Sandbox's composition and think this is absolutely fine for them. Bono's starting to feel the pressure now, trying to make this early game pick a little bit more relevant. Gold lead is about 200 here for Hanwha Life. And also, it should be noted that the first dragon of the game is an Ocean Drake. So if that's not taken here within the next two minutes or so, probably just should not be a very high priority for either team. Yeah, it looks like dragons aren't exactly going to be things that people are going to be putting much priority into. A little bit sad, but we're going to start slow with the drakes, and we're going to move up. Don't worry. In our next few games, we're going to be getting these uh, the Infernals in the Mountains. Is uh, Julia. Be careful. Julia taking quite a bit of damage there. For free. Bono gonna walk over a ward here. But Summit, he's getting used to it. He does have himself the Sapphire Crystal and a Ninja Tabi. So not exactly the tankiest boy right now, especially against the magic damage uh, that the Elise is going to put out. Oh, nice dodge as the last rites is gonna trap both of them in there. Bono going down very, very low. He can't re-enter the fight, but Lava can. He's going to pick up the first blood on the Yorick. If it doesn't work the first couple of times, just come in and do it again. Yeah, and so Summit, he tried his damnedest to outplay that, but not able to in the end. They end up getting a pretty big wave here crashing onto the turret. It's going to be a cannon. It's going to be also another plate going over to Thal. And it does come at a small cost of the mid wave, yeah, as well as Dove getting a turret plate. Interesting that on Fleek prioritized getting the Ocean Dragon over the red buff of the Elise. All right, goes pretty aggressively here in this lane bottom side. Sangin feeling comfortable. Doesn't have his tier stacking just yet, but uh, the Sheen is going to help him with these trades. Going to check this one out one more time. This dodge on the Cocoon is real nice from Summit. Yep. Fantastic dodge. You can see Bono not even... Too scared of the turret shots at all. Manages to escape there right at the end as LeBlanc was able to be there to help out with everything. Yeah, actually works out for Hamalai very, very well. 
We have to remember, guys, put it into perspective. Hanwha are desperate for a win right now. Sandbox are confirmed for playoffs. Their positioning is more about how many best of fives will they have to play. You have to remember as well that working out exactly who's going to be where in the playoffs is, uh, is a big question. And both of our matches today are going to give us a lot more information as to what that actually means. Kingzone playing next. Whether they can pick up a victory over the Afrika Freaks is uh, going to be whether or not they're going to be able to challenge for that. Second place. And today, if Sandbox wins this game, Kings don't have to keep winning if they want to stay ahead of them. Meanwhile, in this game, Infernal Drake will be the next one spawning in three and a half minutes. Both of the junglers are actually really low in terms of level. I think it's a testament to just how much they're trying to actively get stuff happening. Yeah, and how much the ganks haven't been getting a kill, so getting the experience. It's more been, let's zone Yorick away from minion waves yeah. and things like that. So far, hasn't necessarily been fantastic. Summit is only about, you know, 18 behind, and with the amount of attention that uh, Bono's been giving the top lane, I don't know whether that's exactly the most gigantic lead that you could get in that situation. Oh, man. Well, this could definitely get exciting. Yep, Chaney's going to land there onto Joker. The flash from Bono lands the cocoon. Rappel's going to get him on over. And the Q picks up the kill. Now Shelly should come down immediately afterwards. And Hanwar are definitely on the board here at 11 yeah. minutes. And with three minutes remaining on the turret plates, you can bet that this should be utilized to capture some turret plates. Probably just put it up in the top lane, give all that gold to Jace. Yeah, run up there. You could run up there right now, deal with that minion wave, throw a volatile yep. spider right in drop. there, something like that. Yeah, yep. exactly. Could probably come up here right after eating the Gromp, but it looks like Elise wants to use the enhanced recall speed first. Maybe just going to path to Gromp right after that, and then say, hey, Thal has a bit of a minion wave he has to deal with first. I'll be able to get there in the same amount of time, and then summon the Rip Herald. And this was all too easy for Hanwha Life. It was a bottom lane reset for Key. Didn't have to be in bottom. Able to come in there with the Abyssal Voyage as well, just for security. I love the layering of CC as well between Bono and Lava. That was absolutely fantastic. You can always trust Lava to play some pretty decent LeBlanc. But uh, that was just beautiful to watch. And Bono is answering a lot of these questions that we had for him. Like, if he doesn't get the Lee Sin or the Olaf, what does he have? Well, the answer was Zach before. That wasn't great. The Elise, though. Elise is looking fantastic. Ghost gets himself another turret plate bottom side. That's good for Sandbox Gaming. Hanwha, that top side of the map is where they're looking at the moment. Ooh. Up there is okay. That was cute. All right. Well, now I think this is the timing where you want to use the Herald. And Lee Sin is nowhere around. Yorick can actually cancel it. Yeah. Do have it put down, but not in a dark procession range. Baby Cage not available. Julia pops up trying to secure this ward and she immediately oh. goes down. Julia, you were so young. And Tal, I think, missed out on the turret plates there as uh, Shelly charged, charged in. I didn't actually see the number. Well, pop that up. was a pretty big number. Yeah, he got the last one. So the yeah. 610 came in there, but I think there are a few extra turret plates oh. that uh, didn't get claimed. That actually looked like it should have hit. Yeah, it was very, very close. That was really strange. And they're going to get an additional charge here. And Lee Sin shows himself, so maybe Elise just cancels her recall. Yeah. yeah That's going to be the play. Oh, man. Summit actually taking some damage here. Tal not with a oh, large man. mana bar, but Lava's coming in. This is a byproduct of Elise, or Lee Sin showing bottom. That's going to be two turrets. That's all too easy. This, all too easy Jace for Hanwha. Is so big. Now. Sandbox, they need to just get the Infernal. There's seven seconds. Why are they recalling? Well, what? Uh, on fleek is up here. Two seconds to go. They are going to beeline towards that dragon. Lots of pings going down here from Sandbox. They Ooh. do have a teleport onto Ghost. He's going to come down, and on fleek's looking to try right, and put this one in the bag. They end up having to commit a teleport now to make this happen. They are going to be able to capture it in the end anyway. That's great news. That's the cost Sandbox of the teleport, gaming. though. Yeah, I mean, it's an 80 carry teleport, yep. so they're not too worried about it. 80 carries just generally teleport as close to minions as they possibly <laughs> can. It's uh, been what I've witnessed. Joker's going to turn up here in the mid lane, though, as we are definitely in uh, the mid game. 14 and a half minutes in. We've got Ezreal's and Lucian's taking up position, defending 
these outer turrets. Lava is on the split push on the bottom side of the map. Now I guess the question is, how long does Sandbox wait before they themselves have the advantages? And uh, right now, Dove is doing fantastically well. In the mid lane, he's got a 450 gold bounty. You can see a couple of plates were picked up for him as well. Five tower plates went down on the top side, but I don't think all of the money went over to Tal, and that's why it's only 480 gold there on your screen. Our observer's fantastic, calculating exactly the amount of gold from the tower plates does actually go down. Well, here in this game, it's only about a 900 gold lead or so for Hanwha Life, which is not what you would have expected with everything that's gone their way, but again, it's a byproduct of the Rise CS differential. And also not cashing in on those tower yeah. plates on the top side of the map. I mean, that was three that went down, I believe, that uh, just went wanting if they were having a battle against Julia. That's why you don't bully Julia, okay? You Julia did her job. Gold. Exactly. She completely just said, you know what, hey, follow me, and they were just so encapsulated. I would be too. Julia's fantastic. Yep. It's an allure of darkness. Yep. She also almost has a Trinity Force behind her in the form of her master, the Yorick, having a great time, actually. Only eight CS behind. That is not what we're expecting. Here in this game, the Jace does have a Phage as well as his Ghost Blade. But uh, the Black Cleaver is not quite in there yet, and the Trinity Force will be a relevant power spike, and when that Steric's Gauge comes in from Summit, I have a feeling he's just not going to be too scared of Tal. The last rites being maxed out means that he gets a lot of his health back whenever he presses that Q button. Yeah. At this stage of the game, we're probably just going to have a lull state for a little while as Ryze wants to complete that Seraph's Embrace, and Yorick definitely wants to get his Trinity Force completed before Sandbox should be looking for any skirmishes. Yeah, well, the culling just from Ghost by himself. Bono comes around, throws out a little spider. But uh, Itsy Bitsy Spider's not going to scare Ghost at this stage of the game. He's close to picking up his Black Cleaver. That's going to be that two-item spike for the Lucian that we always talk about. It's already in there for Sangyun, though. He's got both of his blue ones. Just waiting for that transformation. Sangyun is a very early double-tier purchaser. We'll see whether he's going to stay on that road here in this game, even though they want to be capitalizing on early game a lot more than a lot of their previous compositions. Oh. Right now, Jace just trying to shove in the bottom wave. Doesn't seem too intent on trying to get turret damage down. Comes and checks for some pink wards first. Rise up there in the top lane. Going to run into a LeBlanc after he's finished eating the Krug camp. But realistically, we're not going to have anything going on. We're going to have mid getting shoved back and forth. Eventually, Rise will shove out this wave, the next wave. Recall, go and get his blue buff. York's going to shove a wave against the Jays. I mean, maybe we get some action here if Lava wants to misstep. I don't think he does. That yeah. minion wave is going to come in. Yeah. So, so just explodes the other side. Shouldn't really get like anything. You said. Oh, man. Well... All right, Summit. Missile Voyage is going to come down towards the bottom side. Key just by himself is Julia. Oh, my goodness. She's just being punished. And Dove and on Fleek now are actually going to be able to get the top tier one turret here. As the Tom Kench elected to ult bottom, trying to capture Summit. I like to think that is once again a sacrifice by Julia. She sacrificed her life, and that means yep. that top turret goes down. Great news. Joker. Going to make the transition towards the top side of the map as Sandbox are actually looking to go aggressive. They've already lost their inner turret on the top side. They're wanting to make that trade as Lava misses the chain. Well, the distorts forward, but just goes immediately back to his original. Kong Yoon just trying to keep farming up his Monomune. As Lucian now has completed his item, Trinity Force completed as well for Yorick. Seraph's Embrace on Rise already. Yeah, almost towards that Righteous Glory as well, as you can see. And he is at max CDR now, too. Yeah. The rise. It's actually cute. Reminiscent of uh, our Vladimir builds that we see, just trying to get that extra 10% in order to get things working. Does work very well on the Rise as well. Likes building all of those items as Joker comes down, puts down another ward that's going to be immediately removed. Sandbox have been controlling this bottom side river throughout most of this game. Scuttle Rivers goes down, Sandbox retained. I'm gonna have to be control. really careful right now. Phage Kindle Jam on the side of Jace. Not quite the Black Cleaver. This would be an item disparity between the two teams. 
And the Shock Blast need to actually land for that poke to work. Ghost just throws in the culling, the Spiderling soaking up a lot of that damage. But you can see Sandbox are getting frisky. They're ready to start yeah, it looks some like sort of fight here. Both teams are they're looking for some action. And I'm not quite sure why Hanwha Life is handshaking this at all. It's only an Ocean Dragon. You don't have to risk the game over this. Lava's going to jump into the pit. They do have full information of how this is going down. The oh, Drake man. goes down, though, and Key takes half of his health bar already. Morning Mist is going to land at Sungyun. Has to get the hell out of there. Joker battle dancing around this fight. There's Lava flashing oh. forward, but misses out on the damage. It's a disaster for Hanwar Sandbox. They've already got the Drake. They're already feeling absolutely fine to continue scaling into this game. 200 gold is now their lead, and three Drakes for the team that didn't have the scaling advantage. Yeah, and... Now, they're going to be able to sit back, be content, and continue to just farm up. They're going to eat all of their jungle camps now. Ezreal trying to clear out that middle wave as the mid-tier one turret for Hanwha Life. It's almost on the last leg. Yeah. Gold difference finally in favor of Sandbox. And honestly, team compositions considered, Hanwha Life is going to find themselves in a very difficult spot here as Yorick is about to hit the point where he's going to start bullying the Jace. Rise is already a monster, and the Ezreal is very far away from being a legitimate menace. So Sandbox are truly in the driver's seat right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's actually it's starting to feel like you're playing top lane against a Nasus, and you just can't put him behind enough. Yeah. You know, you just know that inevitably he's going to get to 600 stacks in one shot he carries, <laughs> and it's just going to be an awful time. And you're just looking at it going, we need to do something. But what is it that we're going to do? On the side of Hanwha, Bono said that we need to focus on that top side of the map. We need to put Summit behind, make Tal gigantic. But you can see 001, the CS, is only eight in favor of the Jace. And I'd, I'd like to actually see the gold here because I could imagine that Summit is probably not too far behind, especially now that the turret parody is in there. Ghost clears out the mini wave with the culling. On fleek is looking for a Q, doesn't find it. Unsuccessful fishing mission for the Lee Sin. Fisher Barrage, just to trim this minion wave. And you can see Sangyun is continuing on his very high scaling build on the Ezreal. Yeah. I think I would have liked to play to the Ruin King a little bit earlier or something like that. This game specifically, just because Hanwha want to be fighting and utilizing the mid-game advantage that they have in the Jace and the LeBlanc draft. And it does seem like they are content on trying to just go later, and now it's going to become the Sangyun show, as he's going to be the only hope that they have against the team composition that Sandbox has. So this is going to be an Ezreal V9. Yep. And he just doesn't have the peel options that Ghost does on uh, Sandbox's side. I mean, they've got a Dark Procession to mess up the battlefield. They've got the Dragon Rage kick from On Fleek. To misposition the Hummer Life members and Joko is going to be fantastic darting around the fight with his quickness. I just like what Sandbox have for themselves in the later stages of the game much more than uh, what Hanwha do. We mentioned that earlier on in the draft, and it just doesn't feel like Hanwha have done enough to put themselves ahead. Dark Procession comes out. Julia, get out of there! No! She's, she's all of a sudden 50 Ooh, gold. She just dissipates. Where do you think she goes? I don't know. That's a weird, that's a weird interaction. I like to think it's sort of like Pokemon. Just goes back to the yeah. Pokeball or something like that. And speaking of back to your Pokeball, in goes the Lickitung. They caught that Snorlax. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely dead. I like that. You use Lickitung, I use Snorlax. At least we were both in the same ballpark. Yeah, we are. We're the same we're generation. The same, same Pokeball. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Wait, you can do that? <laughs> oh, man. Why do oh, I know keep throwing new Pokeballs at these Pokemon? <laughs> oh, man, I messed it up. <laughs> uh, Joker's going to walk across Vision with not very much of a health bar as Sangyu wishes that True Shot Barrage was off cooldown. He's actually going to Arcane Shift over maybe as Lava gets kicked back there from on fleek. Clearing out Vision around this barren area, Sandbox. A thousand gold is the lead. It's about nothing, really. But the fact that they have a lead is the important thing with a composition like this. Relentless Pursuit is going to be used to get Ghost out of the way. Of Sangyun here in the mid lane as Bono's coming on over. That's a lot of That's extra damage. That's a bit of damage. Yeah, Mystic Shot not going to land. So Ghost is going to be okay for the moment. Doesn't have the culling available as uh, Battle Dance lands. That's a great cocoon oh, though. Ghost. And over goes Lava. That's almost the double kill, but the Jace is going to steal that one away. And they'll take themselves the outer turret. Hanwha um, well, Life, they got some more go in them after all. And that can 
definitely be barren potentially here for Hanwha Life on fleek. He might face check this. Yep, teleport to get immediately back in there. Oh no. Yep, Lob is waiting off on the side. He can 100 to 0. Oh, he one doesn't of these know. Players. There's the Realm Warp. This is very aggressive. Oh, he missed the chain. Yep, Lava is going to come in, mimics the chain though, lands that one. Aftershock is going to wear off, and Dove's Life Bar is going to do the same thing. The Ignite ticking down. He has himself oh, the safe gun shield, it. but it's not enough. The last tick from Key's Ignite is going to get revenge. Sandbox have stopped them from doing the Baron though, and Hanwha Life do have relatively low health bars. Summon getting chased out here by Hanwha. Dark Procession comes in there as there's the Abyssal Voyage, but you don't really want this key as he's still taking a lot of damage. The chain lands Whoa, the flash Summit. from Summit, gets himself out, and Blast Cone doesn't even want to be taken here from Lava. He doesn't have enough mana to do enough damage. Oh, and this is going to mean that Sandbox end up getting Infernal Drake. This ends up being completely fine for them. What a weird turn of events, yeah. Atlas. A Sandbox are going to be the ones that make out with an advantage after all of this, unless Bono can be a hero. Yeah, Bono will need to go for the 50-50 steal, though, and not going to be able to do so. Both of these junglers have executes. York just got 14 AD. Yeah. So you can only imagine that Ghost is getting significantly more than that. And this is the scaling composition as well yeah. in this game. And it is Sandbox that's picking up the double, double infernal. infernal. Ugh. at the same time. I know. You know what else? Added emphasis. You know, like what, you know what Hanwha Life said at the same time? Oops. They said get him. Oh, well, yes. No, that wasn't an oops. This was the oops. This was the oops. Yeah. This is Lava missing the Ethereal Chains on Dove initially. Ignite being committed to him. Onfleet tries to save him with a safeguard, but it's just not quite enough. But they lose the rise, yeah. and nothing else is actually a problem. As Sungin yeah. gets himself out of there, but Key once again is dead. Cocoon is going to go wide. Bono, late to this party. He goes never late to the mid lane when there's minions there. <laughs> He's 30 CS in the lead, looking for he his has, first seal item. He has an all right amount of CS per 26 minute. 26 minutes, 302. Yeah. I mean, it's not quite impressed. <laughs> not quite, but you're <laughs> almost there? I'm almost there. All right, all right. You know? That's pretty good for a game one of the day. Yeah. Not bad at all. You know? All right, so we'll take a look at how this all ended up transpiring as this five members uh, suddenly show up. He, he's not going anywhere. Was able to save Song Yoon. Yeah, Joker with uh, the quickness meant that they all just went into the baby cage. Dark Procession, very, very strong from Summit in that instance. And uh, now you look at it, that's three items. For Ghost, he's got the Rapid Fire Cannon completed. Banshee's Veil as well as the Righteous Glory done for Dove. He's very comfortable. Steric's Gage just comes in for Summit as if he knew that I was talking about the items. Yeah. And I feel like Sandbox have done it. They've uh, made it over the line. They're behind in gold by 100. That but they've matter. hit the items They're that they want. So far ahead, you have to think about how much gold is that in, are those Infernal Drakes actually giving oh, yeah. to the side of Sandbox. Let's say that it's almost a thousand per member. Well, then the gold advantage is actually in Sandbox is favor. And then also you factor in the team comp advantage that they have. And it's just not even close. Doesn't matter what the gold disparity at the top might be suggesting about the game state. Hanwha Life is so far behind right now. Well, Trish Barrage is going to come in. Does a fair bit of damage there to Summit, but you can see he gets a lot of his health back with that Q. Bono wants to get on over. The Redemption comes down. Fair bit of damage as Sandbox do peel away from the Baron. Julia, get out of there. Baron does a fair bit of damage. Chain's not going to land there from Lava as Hanwha Life are going to clear up the vision around this Baron pit. They don't have the gusto to get over and actually start off the Purple Worm. You have priority here in this mid lane as Sangyun is clearing out these minions. So Sin turret could be under fire. You can see Sandbox are going to make their way in. Oh, okay. That was a pretty good shot blast. On Fleek taking relevant damage. He wants to be getting into the back line without dying. And he doesn't have his GA completed just yet. Now they are being repelled by Sandbox. It's the kiting attempt. Whoa, now. Dove goes so damn fast. That phase rush active is Joker. He's going to take a lot of damage. That's relevant. Because he wants to get the quickness into the back line. Doesn't have Flash available. Morning Mist is going to land once again. Summit is very aggressive. Oh. You can see he puts down the Dark Procession. Wants to clear out this ward. It's, okay, Julia, oh, Julia, get Julia. out of there. The culling is going to save her. Thank you so much, Ghost. You know who the MVP of this game is. <laughs> it's Julia. Those of you playing at home. Well, big Summit. minion wave. Bottom side of the map. Yeah, he's going to recall. 
He has teleport available. We'll see if they channel it and go for Baron. Yeah, they are. Yep, there's three wards in this Baron pit, so Harmon know exactly what's going on, but this is once again an opportunity for Sandbox to just pull away. Try and get some damage. That's a uh, great true shot barrage there from Sangu. And they have them in the pit. They have them where they want them. As Joker has to be very careful. Battle Dance gets oh, the second one. But Lava what just snipe. picks him off. That was absolutely fantastic from the LeBlanc. Can they actually chase them down, though, is the question. The Realm Warp comes out. Oh, See man. you later, Dove. But look at this leash on the Baron on fleek. Wants to make it a 50-50, but look at this. Hanwha, they're holding on to that health bar. They want to make sure that they can secure this guaranteed. Well, they're taking so much damage from the Baron. Yeah, Baron is MVP of this particular oh, fight. We're going to need him in the damage calculation, and it is going to be everyone peeling away. Oh, man, Baron is MVP. Neither team wants to go for the 50-50. Nope. No one wants to do it. And it's you can so see, you, can yeah. know, you understand exactly why Hanwha Life aren't doing it as well, because there's so much pressure on them. We have to come back to our original point. Hanwha have to win this yeah. series. And every game counts as well. They want a 2-0 more than anything else, just because then they can buffer that game oh, score man. to try and catch up to Damwon. Oh. Okay, Dove and Summit. Dove and Summit, we're definitely looking for a very Mighty cheesy stuff. pickoff. Mountain Drake is live. Yep, True Shot Barrage is now on cooldown as well, so that Baron Pit not as scary here for Sandbox if they do go in there, but not going to be them heading on over. Feels like this game is going to be one of those LCK games, Atlas, that is just entirely decided by one fight and one fight alone. Yeah. This well, is an absolutely beautiful shot here by our observers. This is fantastic. If I could play games like this, I, I'd love it. Oh, man. What kind of resolution do you need for this? Do you remember when you first started playing League and you're like, can't I just zoom out a little bit more? That's always what I wanted, and you could never actually do it. When I first played League, I thought I was playing WoW. <laughs> when I was leveling up for the first time, I didn't know what a MOBA was. Yep. I'd just arbitrarily run around and start eating jungle camps. That's why I, I built, still a jungle. I built two Trinity Forces on Misfortune, <laughs> and the MVP, the MVP coach looked at me with a face that I'll never forget. <laughs> it, was like, it was like the dog meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fine. <laughs> oh man. It wasn't fun. It, was it was not fun. <laughs> he looked like he didn't know what to say. Oh man. Well, that's worse than beat it is. Yeah. Multiple lifelines. This Joker's gonna dive forward. Doesn't get too many with the quickness, but that is a very dead catfish. See you later, Key. Julia jumping on forward. Bono has to go up into the sky. But where does he actually go? Death Chamber is what Summit says. Two kills already for Sandbox and Tal. He has to go back to base. Sangin and Lava, a lot of damage, but zero frontline. And now with all these members down from Hanwha Life, it should be a pretty easy, easy Baron capture, especially that Mountain Drake will certainly help out. Another True Shot Barrage, but this one isn't actually all that threatening. Yes. Tal teleports back There's in. No you can smite. see the Baron goes down so incredibly quickly. And like you say, no smite, no worries. On the side of Sandbox Gaming, they will lock this one down. Five dragons have already been picked up as well, and there's an Elder That's Drake on the way in three and yeah. a half minutes. Now, the Baron will not persist entirely into the Elder Dragon. Nope. But it should give Sandbox more than enough tools to make sure that the map is restricted enough to convert into it relatively easily. As we take a look in the replay, Quickness comes in. He, I mean, he's running around. He's looking like Slowbro. As he can't quite get anywhere. How many different Pokemon is this Tom Kent? <laughs> he's made three so far today. <laughs> when actually he's police the least. Keep going, keep going. No, 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 wait. Go Baron, go Baron. Yep, finish the least, finish the least. Yeah. Those sorts of things. And that was exactly what they did, so good clean comms. I like that we looked in on Joker, because he has been certainly the member of the team that has... Been keeping all of these sandbox players' heads in the right spots. And now Yorick solo pushing up there with Julia. And Hanwha Life are going to be hard-pressed to come up with an answer to this Baron. Anytime that you have a poke-based composition, which the Ezreal Jace is, it's extremely difficult to resist Baron Assault. Yep, and we are past the point of no return here for Hanwha Life as well, is what it feels like sandbox have Double Infernal, Double Ocean Mountain, as well as the composition that just feels much better at this stage of the game, especially with the Baron buff running. 
Anwar are going to have to find something amazing. They're going to come back in this game, and they're going to have to do it soon before their base is in shambles. After this, Yorick has taken hold of it. Okay, oh. on Fleek, taking a lot of damage. The Ignite. Ignite goes down for basically no reason there from Lava. Makes him temporarily recall. Actually, he might not recall. He has Red Smite, and he has Double Ocean. Yeah, Normally Double I, Ocean actually yeah, could well, be I mean, relevant look, here. Look at his HP bar. This is how sad Double Ocean is. Yeah, it's not great. That's... That's really bad. It's already been like almost 20 seconds. Now he's on to the golems, so he's finally starting to get some real HP. Yep. Safeguard gonna help you there. All right. I'm alive now dealing with minion waves that are heading straight through. No more inner turrets remaining. It is these uh, inhibitor turrets they have to start protecting now. Great. Colin comes out from Ghost, does a lot of damage there to Bono. You can see his new Trinity Force. He's very, very happy with it. He's gonna go back home. Joker as well. He lo lost a lot of his health bar, so I don't think that he's going to be sticking around for too much longer. Summon. It's actually oh! really very aggressive as Julia gets eaten. It's a disaster. Bottom side of the map. Sandbox get revenge for her, though, as Dove and Ghost are pushing together. Inhibitor is going to go down. Look at these inhibitor turrets. They're all falling in unison. Hanwha Life just getting stretched way too thin here on this map. Ghost just throwing out autos. The Realm Warp is going to come forward. Summit's fighting against Lava and Tal. Oh, that is a very unfortunate stopwatch timing. Last Rites comes in. Summit almost falls down, but no. Trishot Barrage is almost up, but it looks like Yorick will be able to recall. Yeah, Powered Recall is going to be there. Joker is still in trouble. It's oh, what the oh! heck was that? Oh, my God, no. Joker. That the, was a snipe. I didn't even see it coming. That was the grandest entrance I have ever seen. He grandly entered the death chamber. That was a Joker. fantastic read on what Joker was going to do. That was a perfect true shot barrage. Can't actually tell. Maybe he was thinking that Summit ran yeah. into blue, but that was... I don't know. I, don't I just know wasn't why. expecting that it honestly, at all. That looked like he was trying to catch it. As on Flake is going to go into his stopwatch. It doesn't actually matter that Joker died just there. The Nexus... Yeah is soon to follow. 6,000 gold the lead for Sandbox at the end of that one. Beautiful, beautiful play to keep calm and collected in the early game and then just carry it through with a better yeah. late game comp. And we see what ends up happening if you draft team compositions like this and don't manage to secure yourself enough leads. Things are just, they're going to go poorly for you. I really want to see the replay. Oh, I, I want to understand why he because it's like he was he was diving for a catch. He was it's trying like to catch it. Yeah, it was like, like baseball. Yeah, exactly. Why? Why? He's, he's, he was thinking it's not League of Legends anymore. It's I'm like playing baseball now. I need I need to make the dive. I need to make the dive. And he caught it to his credit. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, oh, I don't know. I wonder who Never actually changed, ends Joker. up Never getting changed. the MVP here. I was actually thinking about that towards the end of the game. I'm I actually don't know. I think Summit probably deserves yeah, I think, it for I think he actually weathering the storm. It. Yeah, he weathered the storm so well. He had so many mechanical outplays on the opponent. Yeah. He managed to draw so much aggro and attention and yet keep staying in the game. I think he just actually has to get it. No one else actually stands out to me. No, I don't think this so either. Game. Unless you give it to Dove because he was doing a lot of damage. I assume the damage graph will be l pretty large uh, for the, uh, the, the rise. That would bring Summit to 900 MVP points. Damn. He does pick up a lot of them here for Sandbox. Yeah. I mean, Ghost is the other option, I guess. He did a lot of damage. He uh, certainly had a gigantic gold bounty at the end of that one. So another option. But I think it was more how the team of Sandbox Gaming played around right. what the win conditions for Hanwha Life were. And I love seeing that in teams. Understanding your own win conditions is one thing. Identifying exactly what your opponent wants to do and denying it is the other one, and that's absolutely fantastic. I mean, Checking out the damage, it was a lot that came in from the Lucian. Leeson's helping. Yeah. Leeson is uh, Leeson's doing quite well there, 3.8. Yep, and but, uh, Tom Kench did yeah. more damage than both the Leeson and the Rakan. <laughs> <laughs> and almost the uh, Elise as well. Yeah. Shout outs there to Key. And when you're in spots like this as Hanwha Life, I know that they didn't want to 50 50 the Baron, they really should have. Yeah, I feel like the desperation was yeah. in there. And I think we were having conversations like that uh, on Friday where there was another game similar to this where you have a to Baron was attempted just because right. you have to, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, when you've got these uh, early compositions, you have to play around that power. Harm or life, they can do it again. This is, of course, a best of three series. So after a very short break, we will come back to see whether they can keep their playoff dreams alive. Don't go anywhere.